Welcome to 1025. We're so glad you're able to join us this morning here. This is my favorite golf hat. For those of you who know me well, you know that it gets a lot of use in the summer months here. So I wear it when it's golfing and even when there's mist or light rain in the air for it protects my head. Especially I wear it on bright sunny days to help to protect my skin from the sun. I've worn this hat to Jerusalem when I've led tours and it stands out because it's red and the people in my group can follow me along. This hat is especially special to me because it was given to me by a member of our church who died just a few months ago. And so there's the memories of my love for her that comes out through this hat that I think of each time I pick it up and put it on my head. The point of this is this. When I lived in Arkansas 12 years ago, there was a story in the newspaper one day about a man who was killed because he was chasing his hat that had blown off and it blew onto the freeway. And a semi-truck was coming along and obviously couldn't stop in time and killed him. And I'll never forget how that story ended. The final sentence in that newspaper article was this. It's amazing how you can lose everything when you're chasing nothing. You know, how many of us have been chasing the wrong things in our lives the past months or years leading up to this virus? For me, I love sports. I spent a lot of time watching baseball games and basketball and hockey and the like. I also like to spend time in the evening right before bed relaxing on my tablets, uh, playing games and the like here. A lot of my time has been spent chasing after things that truly don't have importance that I've recognized now that they've been taken away from us because of the response to this virus here. But look what the Bible has to say to us in Ecclesiastes chapter 1. We read, Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. King Solomon who wrote these words inspired by God, he had everything. Incredibly rich, the richest man in the world. Several beautiful palaces here. He had gold, he had silver, he had incredible jewelry. But he tells us in these words here that everything that the world has to offer without God is meaningless. These days as we're living without sports, these days where we're living without restaurants to eat in, these days where we can't gather together in large gatherings of any kind, actually can give us a focus on things that are truly meaningful, things that will last eternally. I heard a story yesterday from a family. It's all cooped up together, saying this has been wonderful. They're eating their meals at home as a family instead of in the van on the way to a sports practice. They're playing games together after supper, Monopoly and the like. They're laughing, they're interacting, they're joining their lives together more than they did when they were under the hustle and the bustle of this busy society here. During the season of Lent, God always gives us a time to readjust. And this year, he's really giving us that opportunity with the new perspectives. As you heard last week in our video, do we look at this as an obstacle or do we look at this as an observation? So I ask you, use this time wisely. Spend more time with your loved ones. 
spend more time with our Lord. Read his word alone as a family. Pray together. Focus on the things that are eternal, not on the things that so often can be meaningless. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that when things look so bad, that your promise from Romans come true, that all things work together for the good for those who love you. We know you'll work good through this, Lord. Give us the strength now to get through it. But Lord, work good so that as we live out the rest of our lives and so do our children and those that follow them, that we as Solomon said can focus on things that are important from generation to generation. That thing of most importance, us building a close and intimate relationship with you as our Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again. Tune in tomorrow to 1025, where God will speak and encourage us again.